Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Chen Long. I'm from University of Washington. And today I'm going to tell you how to scale our program synthesis algorithm to handle SQL queries. And this is work done with Alvin Ross. So, what is SQL? SQL is a language of query relation database, of course. For example, you can write a select from where query to get the ID of a user. But on the other hand, SQL is also very powerful. You can use advanced operators like group by, subquery, or join to complete a task like argmax or moving average. Being expressive and powerful is good, but it also makes SQL very hard to learn. In fact, a lot of SQL users have to go to SQL flow to write a post to get answer from experts to solve their problems. From the uh, perspective of programming language research, what can we do to help them? Can we develop a tool to automate the query writing process without letting them to go to SQL flow? So in order to help them, first we need to know what kind of information can user uh, give us. So this is a typical SQL flow example taken just from SQL flow. The, we can see from the post, users uh, really enjoy asking culture in terms of info examples. And this is definitely one source of uh, information we can take from the user to help them. Now, on the other hand, we noticed that when users are having some concern related to their task, they're not hiding them from the expert. Uh, this task, for example, are you want to get the maximum two values for each group. They're not hiding the two from the expert. This is also some of the piece of information we can take. And lastly, sometimes the users are able to understand what kind of education they are going to do. They want to get a max or mean. And this can be also be an optional function we are taking to take advantage of single dependency SQL queries. So the key here is that we're trying to help users, and we are just defining culture based on what information they can provide, what are they actually willing to provide. And so this is our question de definition. We're going to synthesize SQL query from a pair of input of example to get with some additional constants and aggregated functions. So now we have the problem defined, or we're going to do to help them. The synthesis algorithm, I'm going to demonstrate with a running example first. So the running example is, is a reasonably simple example. Is the user wants to get a maximum value below 50 for all OID group in table T2 and join with T1. This is a solution query. It may be a little bit complex, but let me explain to you. So in the first part, the user wants to get the two groups from the table T2. And especially, they want the result to be below 50 for each group. So essentially, you want to have filter the table first and obtain the groups with value less than 50. And you want to group by to get a maximum value for each group. And essentially, 1, 30, and 2, 10. And last, you want to join the query with the first table on the join key UID and OID. And this forms the problem. So now we're just talking about how we actually synthesize this, query, this kind of query with subquery aggregation from the example provided by the user. So the basic argument we can think of is, of course, new research. So in new research, I'm not going to define formally, but I'm just demonstrating an animation with arithmetics. Suppose we user give you the number two and the output six, give operators add and multiply, what are you going to do to send out the six from the input two? So of course, we can enumerate programs based on the input from the user. When user give you a two, you can enumerate programs just by it, adding two together or multiplying two. And then we just go further. We use a component we enumerate in the first place and to complete more complex programs. But you see, this definitely does not scale because the number of programs per stage is exponential to the number of stages. You can think like eight, in eight stages, the number is extremely big. But fortunately, the program language research is not that bad. We already developed some idea. Uh, previous work has already developed some idea to group, by the, group the programs by their values. So the key idea is that although the two programs are semantically, uh, semantically different, uh, their behavior on the given input two are the same. So that in the search process, whatever you do, those two programs are not distinct during the search process. In this sense, we're able to group the programs into a value to compress search space. So we are going to enumerate more complex programs. We're not going to keep around all possible syntactic programs, but instead only enumerating with the values we construct from the simple programs. In this case, we perform enumeration, evaluation, and then enumeration, and then evaluation again, until we find some value that equals to the output. And now six is the output that matches the user example. Now we can obtain the program from the uh, beginning to the output. One, uh, uh, every tree just form a value program that is consistent with the user example. And this is another idea it's about me. It's a, I, uh, the key idea here is that just using the memorizing all the values that can represent the search space. Essentially, the number four, six, eight are all values that can be computed for the program at the depth of two. And this idea has been successfully adopted in synthesizing distributed protocols and also super, super optimized assembly code. Given this great algorithm, can we use it using SQL? Of course. The only difference now here is that we're, only, we're using tables instead of integers, and the operators are SQL operators. So let's just start. So from the table T1 and T2, we enumerate all possible programs here. 
a little bit more, but not too bad probably. And then we perform an evaluation on all these programs. We obtain a few values. You can see like, although we have more, uh, we have more uh, programs than the value, so still we still do the compress. And we perform more iteration, more evaluation, more iteration, and more evaluation until we find some value that is equal to the output. This is a T6 here. And we can get the value, the trace from the input to the output actually forms a value program. This program is essentially the credit program I, I see, I showed in the beginning. Well, this seems good, perfectly well, but only works on my slide for now. And the key problem here is that, the, the first thing is that the SQL operator is unlike arithmetics. It is parameterized by the predicates. Just given the large number of queries per stage, you can say, you can, even in the third stage, the number of queries is essentially over almost a half million. And the second problem is that when you are performing evaluation on the queries, you have to evaluate a query and materialize the table. The computation can be a disaster. You can think like you want to join three, ta three tables and the output can be a thousand rows, even the input only 10 rows. And those two challenges essentially just make the value-based compression very inefficient and uh, ineffective. So what can we do? So this is key, our, our key insight. Instead of directly searching the program from an input example to construct a query, we're going to search first for the kind of abstract queries. What is abstract queries? Abstract queries is a type of query whose predicates are represented in the host. And we use this abstract to perform two optimizations. So the first is to prune pr query families. So now the, the idea is that if we can tell that given an abstract query, if none of the instantiation is going to be consistent with the example, we can just throw the whole skeleton away, and all the query with skeleton will be thrown away. And the second idea is to use the abstract query as a, uh, the tool to optimize the predicate synthesis as well. So this is our two phase synthesis algorithm, and I'll describe them in detail. So the first part is evaluating abstract queries with over optimization. So the question now here is that, given this abstract query, can you tell if this query is able to lead to the output? output? You cannot tell directly because you cannot evaluate the query uh, using a SQL engine. But instead, we can perform an overall approximation on it. So the key idea is that, for example, in this simple select, select case, uh, although we have no information about the predicate, we know whatever we are going to fill into the hole, the result is going to be contained by the table T1. And we just use uh, this table as a summary of all tables that can be constructed from any program instantiated from the skeleton. So this is an example. If you fill in a hole, fill in a hole with a predicate, the output is definitely a table contained by this summary table. Actually, uh, this overcompletion is also defined on other operators, like join, aggregation. And the best part is inductive defined, so that given any after query or a query skeleton, we're able to tell whether the, output is, whether the skeleton is able to instantiate it into a query that can be considered with an input example by just over approximate it. If, it. if the output table is contained by the summary table, then we can tell it's possibly we can fill in some predicate to make it uh, into a candidate program. Otherwise, we can just throw it away. So this forms our first phase single piece part. The first phase is essentially searching for abstract queries that able, that's over the course of the output. And we just started from the input example provided by the user and starting to enumerate. But now here, we're not enumerating on the on SQL operators. Instead, with abstract operators, without having to worry about any predicates for now. And we're going to evaluate, uh, enumerate, and evaluate. Now we're evaluating into over approximations, of course. If, uh, yeah. And then we go face by face until we get some output table, uh, until we get some table, that output is contain, contains the output table. And for example, you see the, the one on the top, it does not contain output table, so we can just say any of the program on the top is not going to be instantiated. It has no way to be instantiated into an output uh, candidate program. So we got to get a T6, it's a candidate, and the trace from the input to the output actually forms a query skeleton that we can work around in the second phase. So this means, given this skeleton, we are possibly able to fill in some predicate to make it into a candidate program. And on average, uh, the saving on the, on the case I show you is seven times less. The uh, uh, number of tables generated is seven times less. And the best part is that we don't have to do the computation from the queries to the tables for millions of uh, variations of predicates for now. So now, we have achieved a, bad, a, a good part. We have to prune query families. Essentially, we just throw away all the skeletons that has no way to over the output. And this is a, an empirical evaluation of our, our benchmark. Now, every we're able to prove 90% of queries a skeleton out directly. So now this comes uh, the second problem. What are we going to do with the predicates? There's two hosts. How can we find the uh, uh, red predicates into the host? So let's just take a look at the search space for predicates first. Uh, this predicates, 
essentially sounds pretty easy. Two false comparison of columns and with some conjunction dejection. But the number can be very big. Essentially, the key part is the uh, it's just given this query. You want to you want to enumerate all possible combination. Number can be a disaster. There are totally millions of uh, candidates to search. But of course, we can also reuse the enumerate search algorithm to perform the, the problem to solve the problem. Essentially, we first unroll the query into a pipeline stage. Essentially, every stage is a subquery inside the like big skeleton. And we're just doing a bottleneck, a single test of the practice. Essentially, those are input that are automatically contained for the uh, leaf level subqueries. And we enumerate all possible candidates for the query and evaluate them on, on all the table T2 and to get T4. Also, those equivalent classes are grouped similarly at the fashion of arithmetics. And we perform enumerate, and we then get enumerate more predicates for the next level subquery and try to evaluate all pairs to get the values out. And we can perform this stage iteratively until we get some output that matches the, uh, some output that matches the example provided by the user. So that the trace essentially forms a candidate instantiation. This still seems good on my slide, but in principle, there's still some problem we haven't solved. We just throw from the first phase to the second phase. One of the problems is a big computing overhead still here. The system is given any alternate input from the uh, uh, previous stage, we're going to try all combinations on the all possible predicates for the current subquery. And the second part is the problem for efficient representation. We're still material and table. We're still doing table oper operation here. And the computation and story overhead is just still a disaster. We haven't solved yet. But now there's a very good part. Remember, we have uh, generated this kind of summary table in the first phase. And the idea is that any summary table over a approximate any table can be constructed from the instantiated query. Essentially, anyway, given any intermediate state, it actually is uh, it actually subsumed, is, it is subsumed by the summary table. So that we can use a summary table to perform encoding. Because any table is, uh, we just need to use a big vector to represent which rows in the summary table is going to present in the current evaluation result. So that we solve the first problem. We're able to represent an intermediate state uh, very concisely. Essentially, we represent tons of tables with one table, but a tons of big vectors. But now how about the second problem? We still need to do pairwise computation with each big vector together with each predicate. So let's just take uh, the special one the part of the pipeline to take a look. So essentially, the problem here is that now we have uh, two big vectors. Uh, there are alternate inputs from the previous stage. And we have three candidate uh, predicates, for example. And we have to, the problem is that we have to compute two times three operations to get only three values, because a few of them actually behave the same on the example provided by the user. So why, why do we need to compute six times to get only three values? Is there a way to reduce the number? Somehow, we do discover something, is that the predicates actually, if, they, if we can tell the predicates that behave the same on the summary table, they're going to behave on the same on the whole pipeline, regard, just given the, uh, in the example provided by the user. So the key idea here is that if two predicates behave the same on, output, on the summary table of the current subquery, they are guaranteed to behave the same on any instance of the subquery, so that we only need to keep them around. For example, true at a maximum value less than 50, less or equal than 50, have the same thing on the output table, essentially they're filtering nothing. So we only need to keep two of them around. Essentially, we reduce six commutations to four commutations. This seems okay on this case, but in practice, the number redu re reduction is actually 40,000 times. You can think the uh, key benefits come from the conjunction disjunction, these kind of disasters. So now this looks good. We're given, we're still doing new research, but we, with optimization based on over optimization, we reduce the number of computation and we make the representation very efficient so that we ultimately achieve the goal. So this is basically just a synthesis algorithm. But uh, as a tool, it's a program by exam system for SQL query. So we still need to do some like outer loop. So one thing is that in our simple process, I didn't mention here how the depth is constructed, but essentially we iteratively try the depth until we find some query that is, satis that is good enough for the solution. Now also, we, have, we also have to deal with ambiguity because one example is definitely an insufficient, uh, incomplete specification of the problem. So this is probably the part we are least proud of. Essentially, we have to rank curious, curious, curious based on complexity and naturalness. And also, if the query does not match the user's intent, we ask you to produce a new example to us. So we implement a tool, in, uh, uh, name site. And this is a URL. You can try it now, possibly. And we support a bunch of SQL features, including select drawing group by application. And we have a key feature that we support, suppose, uh, support arbitrary SQL queries, composition, and outer join, exists a union, this kind of composition operations. That's still something we have to do in the future, arithmetic, pivoting, window function, and some other, like, Table update. 
We evaluate two on a bunch of ben uh, sample benchmarks, including uh, in total uh, 193 benchmarks, and every example site provided the user a 33. Uh, so this just makes sense, like, the user are reasonably well to provide some examples to general task. We compare three tools. One is the immune search algorithm I mentioned before. It's first using product, product, distributed protocol synthesis, and the single synthesizer based on the decision tree algorithm, and our tool. The evaluation condition is given four gigabytes of memory and 1,600 time timeout. And so here is the chart. So in total, there are 193 benchmarks. We're able to solve 143 of them, and the immune algorithm is only able to solve 92 of them. We can see here that uh, the speed up on average is 34 times faster compared to your research on benchmark that both algorithms can solve. And the most uh, good, best part is that 59% uh, can be answered only within 10 seconds. Essentially a major fraction. Uh, we also study the why we why do we fail. Actually, 34 of them are including missing feature. Some queries are insane on server flow. They want to do some dense rank or whatever. And this query can be like have a very, very uh, high nest network. We cannot solve it now. Also, a few timeout and one failure to disambiguate. And so, we compare, compare with a single thing slider on their benchmark. We're able to solve 18 of them, and single thing can solve 15 of them. The key part is like, even with support but a much larger range of queries, our performance is not as bad compared to theirs. So, I want to also mention some related work. The first is new research and based on based emulation, and a few based on observation. One thing I want to mention is the first talk in the beginning of the session about. Research, uh, key idea is also given a partial program. How do we prune the search space? Uh, I made a, a little figure here. Uh, so actually, the pruning approach is kind of similar. We use overall automation by evaluating the skeletons into an approximation of the any search result. And in their approach, they use constraint input properties to represent the pruning condition. So in our case, the pruning overhead is, very, is pretty high because in the case of aggregation, we need to use the overall approximation consists of all possible aggregation values we need to do. So the overhead is very high. But also on the other hand, it's achieved better pruning power. So essentially, it's uh, a lot of features like a row number, column number, or new value provided are automatically encoded in the evaluation result. So uh, they're just automatically get. And one of the best part about our algorithm so far is the key part of benefit from value-based memorization by compressing the search base into values. So that's probably just my talk. And you're welcome to visit the website and enjoy whatever. Yes, thanks. <laughs> By the way, I feel I, I have to show a demo because I spent a lot of time on building a demo and I just have to show it now. So this is an example. It's just a, or you build a tool on a website, you can check now or you can just see how actually you saw. I just random pick some several posts. And this is one extra example. The user wants to uh, find a record in T2 but not in T1. And essentially, in, in order to solve this query, you need to, I mean, in our tool, you just need to click one button. But actually, when you write a query, you need to join two tables with a left outer join and to, uh, to filter out the rows with no values. So kind of cool. Go and try it. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for several questions. Um, I have a question. So I, I think I remember seeing that you said that the average uh, table size was like 36 or something? Yep. Uh, have you tried to see how well this goes to larger examples? Uh, sorry? Have you tried to see how well the synthesize, uh, the synthesizer works for larger uh, oh, table sizes? Yeah, so typically we are able to handle like just still less than 100, similar to uh, like the previous paper. So the key part here is that uh, we need to do over approximation. Essentially, we need to compute some inter states. If the table is too big, the progression is also very big, and we are unable to keep it around. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so you mentioned that you only consider predicates that like are not equivalent, correct? So like if two predicates are equivalent, then you only consider one of them. Uh, so during the search process, we only consider one of them. But right. after the search, we are going to expand the representative into all its families. For right. The, yeah. Okay. So um, if there's like. A, a gigantic space of predicates. Um, yeah. uh, how do you efficiently, uh, I guess, detect whether predicates are equivalent or not without actually looking over the entire search space? Actually, uh, so the cool part is like we only need to look first for the equivalent class for primitive predicates, and the compound part we only need to rep use representatives to construct. So actually, the space is not as as big after reduction on the primitive first. All right. Thanks. Thanks.
Very nice work. In query optimization, often uh, the, the, to, to do an efficient plan, they sample the tables and then run a, a couple plans to explore the space. Would that work here? Uh, kind of. Like, if we can possibly just like do some sampling to estimate what kind of skeleton might work. But so now we are more considering like how to make the search space complete. Then that kind of strategy can be possibly used in heuristic to prove a search space in the first space. Well, that would let you look at bigger tables at some level, maybe. And yeah. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? OK. Oh, one more. Uh, so I'm just curious in terms of who you, who, who would you envision using this and to what extent do they have to understand SQL uh, or will this eventually potentially be a replacement for end users who don't really have a deeper understanding of writing complicated SQL queries? Oh, this is cool. This is something I didn't show you in my demo. Sorry about that. I actually have a visualization just build up the query result. Essentially, we don't want users to understand a query. Your query is quite complex. We are able to users to run a query during on the data set to obtain a visualization. It's so a user can just automate the process and only reason about the visualization. So yeah, this is helping users to understand data is our primary goal. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Let's thank the speaker again.